So people were asking in yesterday's video if I got my hairs did because they like they look super dark. And yeah, I did get my hairs did. Uh, it is super dark. It's actually really gorgeous. It's this beautiful chocolate brown on one side, and then it has this beautiful red streaks on the other. In with my gal, who is amazing, for like four hours, and I had to go because Scout had an appointment, and so she didn't have time to actually cut my hair, and so she just sent me, and then I have to come back and get my hair cut. But anyway, I came home after Scout's appointment and was helping Mr., and it started torrential downpour rain on us, so we're out there with a tarp that I got stuck under. That's a different story entirely. I was scared, but trying to pull a giant tarp, like a football size field tarp over the whole addition, because you know, it's, we're making the house, it's raining. And uh, in the process, my hair got really wet. I looked like a drowned rat. And so I think a lot of the colors messed up. So I haven't fully talked about it, but yes, it is darker, but my gal has to fix it next week. But thank you for noticing anyway. That's it, that's all. I mean, there's a video and I'll tell you more about the video in just a minute, but before I do, Hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for week 33 of year three, and today we are doing the pumpkin spice soap for a drop in the ocean shop.com, and we're going to talk a little bit about using essential oils in your soaps, because it can be confusing. Now, we did the IFRA about fragrance oils a few weeks ago at this point, and while that is really good information for fragrance oils, it gets a little bit complicated when it comes to essentials, because I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of the places I get my essential oils from do not have the IFRA sheets. Now there is a reason for that, and we should probably talk about what that reason is, you know, and how you should be using your essential oils within your soaps, should you choose to use them. Now this particular soap is an essential oil only soap, a drop in the ocean shop.com is just essential oils, natural colorants, all of the jazz. And so you'll get to see a pour and the making of the pumpkin spice. And I'm gonna, you know, give you better, I think, footage of the little cinnamon sticks that I use with the melt and pour and all that jazz within all this. So let's get to the video and we can talk about and do all of those things. Okay, so today let's talk about essential oils in soap and how to calculate them because it can be actually kind of complicated and when you're looking on different blogs and whatnot, you're going to run the gamut with what people are actually recommending. Anywhere from people saying, you know, use four drops of this for a three pound batch or, you know, use it 3% or 1% or what have you. And so it can be a lot more confusing to use essential oils within your soap as opposed to fragrance oils because fragrance oils, if you are getting them and sourcing your fragrance oils from a reputable company that's specifically for candles or soap making, then you're going to be able to see the IFRA certificate from said reputable company. Now with essential oils, it can get a little bit tricky though because essential oils with all of the different changes that have gone on with the IFRA over the years, essential oils have sort of been all over the board as far as how they are tracked and how they are measured. IFRA certs for essential oils, I heard at one point in time, were a thing, but now it's not a thing. One of the reasons why it's really not a thing and it's kind of hit or miss is because essential oils are really not very well regulated at all. And they differ from batch to batch as far as the different components and whatnot will go, will end up in a particular, you know, essential oil, let's say like a rosemary, for example, 
you can have a different percentage of your components from a rosemary from Spain versus a rosemary from, you know, India or whatever for, for a lot of different reasons. And so the best way to actually do that and see what your usage rate should be for your Cat9, for your, you know, rinse off product for a soap is to actually look at the different components that is in, that are in an essential oil. So let's continue on with using rosemary as an example for that and show you what components I'm talking about. And there we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six different components that comprise a rosemary essential oil, right? So anything from the pinene down to the linalool and uh, what percentages they're in. Now I pulled this from New Directions Aromatics, but when I went to go look at a different uh, website for a different essential oil supplier, their percentages were a little bit off. And that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult to actually get an IFRA for an essential oil. And so that leaves you with essentially taking those six components and looking all of them up individually on the IFRA website of, I think there's like 3000 different components that are on it. And uh, you can look at all the categories there and then you take them based on the percentages and if it's 75% for, you know, the camphor or whatever, and you essentially determine what your safety usage rating is, the way that the fragrance oil companies are doing it to give us these IFRA sheets. Now that can be a huge pain in the butt. And so for that reason, obviously with all of the different maths and everything involved, I would recommend uh, first and foremost, finding a supplier that actually, well, first up, don't buy your essential oils if you if the supplier that you're getting them from does not have either a certificate of analysis so you can actually pull that information or some safety pages which you should be able to pull that information from as well although i just went and looked at rosemary on brambleberry and i am not seeing any components information so with uh, New Directions Aromatics with Bulk Apothecary, the certificates of analysis, they exist. You can, you know, do the maths with all of that if you would like to, or to find a company that also has an essential oil calculator. Now, I was just talking about Brambleberry and how they do not have the certificates of analysis. That is true. They do have an essential oil calculator, which with playing around with it, it works out pretty well. It's it's decent-ish based on the essential oils that they actually sell. The problem does come with, however, Brambleberry does not sell a whole bunch of essential oils. So that you're not going to be able to get if you're trying to blend, like we were blending for the, you know, apple soap or whatever, m multiple different, you know, essential oils into it. You're not going to be able to get the information for your essential oil calculator really dead dead on with this calculator because Brambleberry does not sell a couple of the essential oils that I use for that particular blend. So that does make it a little bit more complicated. Now, fortunately, this is not, this is not me saying that this is, you know, you should just not use essential oils in your soap as a result because it's math and math is hard and isn't that, you know, terrible. So just go with fragrance oils. I'm definitely not saying that. I know that there's a market for essential oils. I use essential oils in soaps for a lot of wholesale accounts. Actually, they only do essential oils, but it does make my mouth a little bit tricky, but there are other options here. So let's not fret. Okay, so first up, if you have to search up all of these components and actually figure out the math, that's going to be a huge pain in the butt, right? To actually work on that all, you know, on your own and then the chances of actually having a, making a mistake and, you know, doing something wrong and overusing an essential oil could be bad, right? Well, yeah, kind of, but the biggest thing that I would be more concerned about with all of this is just kind of knowing what essential oils are going to be really tricky ones that you really shouldn't be putting in soap or using in soap at too terribly uh, high amounts anyway. I mean, cinnamon obviously comes to mind. Is that something you can put in soap? Yes, you can. Is the actual percentage incredibly small? Yes, it is. And for that particular one, it kind of actually works because cinnamon is such a potent thing that you can use it at, you know, a fraction of a fraction of a percentage and it will still, you know, yield some of that cinnamon scent in an overall blend. You're not going to be able to make an entire cinnamon soap, however. Now, instead of actually 
trying to figure all these masks out on your own, I highly recommend going and supporting Modern Soap Making and their EO Calc. And I will put the links below really for all of this. So you can go look at all of the IFRA ratings, kind of see why we are in this place where we are with essential oils. They've been doing and wanting to do some round tables and really kind of standardize essential oils for a number of decades at this point. Haven't made a lot of progress with it yet, unfortunately, but you can go check that out and see what they're what they're doing with that. But also go support uh, Modern Soap Making and eocalc.com, another link that will be below. And you can, you know, send them some muns. I absolutely, I do recommend, you know, giving them some, you know, well, some donations for all of their hard work because effectively they've created a calculator for you and it has a really exhaustive list and there's a lot of different options that you can use within it to create your own blend or just the, you know, actual IFRA and the Cat9 rating for a specific essential oil or whatever. Really, really useful tool if you're going to be working with essential oils. And definitely things that we should not do when it comes to essential oils, right? We should not be measuring anything out in drops when it comes to our soaps. Now, even really realistically when it comes to any of our leave-on products, even though it's such a slight amount, get out your little teeny tiny scale that measures in, you know, the tiny amounts and measure it out accordingly. You weigh everything out in your soap making process. You weigh everything out in your lotion making process. Do not leave your essential oils to chance and just, you know, do a drop of this, a drop of that. Because what does that mean? You know, the, the, those drops are just kind of a non thing. So anytime that you see anyone doing a, you know, just a couple drops of this, couple drops of that, just be safe, go within the usage rates of the essential oil and weigh it out properly. So you know that you're not effectively just wasting essential oils doing some drops that are just not going to come through in the finished saponified product or that you're not overshooting it with something like, I don't know, a cinnamon, and you have some problems with it. So another thing to really keep in mind with all of this is that most essential oils, as I kind of started to say earlier, most of them are going to fall within the, it's safe to use in a carrier, which is effectively a soap, at higher percentages than, you know, you would normally soap at, much like the fragrance oils, right? We have we use Sierra Candles and one of the scents that I got recently from Sierra Candles as an example and their IFRA for Cat9 was like 100%, right? Well, I would never put that amount of uh, fragrance oil into my products because it would not saponify. It would be a big old mess. And so I st tend to stick between, you know, well, for essential oils, you can do the same between 3 to 5% of your total oils, the actual oils, your soaping oils, not your... Uh, total batch weight and the reason why you do the soaping oils because that is a question that I get kind of a lot So I'll just address it while it's on my mind. Uh, the oils are what you should be measuring all of your uh, Calculating all of your fragrance and your essential oils off of the oils that go into the batch not the total batch weight because the lye is consumed through saponification and the majority of the water is gone and so the only thing that has any real value that's left behind is going to be the fatty acids, so the oils. So calculate it based on that weight, otherwise you could be overshooting your bars too. Now, with these, as I said, a lot of essential oils are still gonna be sticking within that 3% range, so you should be good to go. Is it the best idea to be soaping at three to 5% with an essential oil? Well, I mean, yeah, if you're wanting it to actually come through after saponification and make sure that you have a really beautifully scented bar, you bet. Is it most cost effective? No, it's not. There are a lot of pros and a lot of cons to using essential oils or fragrance oils. And these are all decisions that obviously you make on your own. For my part with essential oils, I do them with my wholesale accounts when they request them. But for my own line, I mean, I like playing with fragrance oils. So I play with fragrance oils. And for actual essential oil for a rinse off product, I tend to keep my essential oils just for my leave-ons because my leave-ons are the ones where you're gonna be getting the good benefits for you know, the skin, the topical, whatever. Again, it, it works if you believe in it, that sort of thing. But for a rinse off product, I don't know. I think essential oils for me, they're a little bit too pricey to, you know, use in soap. But obviously if that is your journey, you do that journey and that is all up to you. But there's some essential oil, you know, information and I'll, again, post a whole bunch of links below so you can look up this stuff. And there it is, an absolutely gorgeous batch of pumpkin spice soap, complete with the cute little cinnamon sticks. 
on top made out of melt and pour and uh, yeah some information about essential oils essential oils can get complicated because of the different components that are inside of the essential oils you're having to look up the IFR rating for each of those components to determine what your overall scent blend should be what your max load can be and so for that reason that's why you see across the board so many varying opinions on how much essential oil you can use I mean I've seen recipes that say yeah use like four drops for an entire like three pound batch of soap like that's wild and so yeah it can get very very complicated for sure using essential oils in soaps it's definitely a choice it's definitely a moment and there are uh, pros and there are cons and my opinion on all of that is you do whatever you want for sure the extra leg work that does go into an essential oil soap it is there it is real so just keep that in mind I hope you guys had a good time today I've got to go I don't know if you're hearing all of the bang banging but it's uh, we're, we're, we're putting the literal roof on today before the rains start again so we can get this house weatherproofed in before the rains start for nine months so thank you for existing I'm talking to the Sudzers now Thank you for being you. Thank you for being epic. I got to go. Uh, Scouts thing is happening today, so I will uh, tell you guys about it in the Discord. It's all a thing. But yeah, so keep her in mind and in your thoughts and all the things as well. But I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.